Hello to you newcomers and welcome back subscribers. This is episode 3 of our complete clone trooper armor build. And in this episode we're going to be talking about preparing our parts to be 3D printed. Some of the settings that I like for wearable 3D printables as well as how to get the best bang for your buck. So let's get started. You'll see here that I have the chest piece split out into six sections. This is because the object itself is larger than the print bed, so I won't be able to print it all in one piece, so I've cut it up into six. This is also a nice benefit because it limits your risk as far as prints failing. If I tried to print, say, this, these top four pieces all at once, if the print were to fail, say across this line here, I'd probably have to throw the whole thing away. So printing it in smaller portions minimizes your risk of failures. Well, not failures, but at least it minimizes the impact that failures might have. And trust me guys, there are a lot of things that can cause your prints to fail. So it's best to split it up into manageable pieces. I know this is going to create more seams in our armor, but further on down the road when we start to fill in and smooth this armor it's not going to matter. So moving forward I'm going to open up Simplify 3D. This is the slicer software that I use but like I said in my previous videos it is a paid for software so if some of you guys are using Cura the things that I'm going to teach you guys in this episode can also transfer over into Cura 3D printing has very similar settings. You know, every slicer is going to have a layer height setting as well as an infill setting and so on. So let's start bringing in the pieces into Simplify 3D and start slicing them. So we can go here to import and find our armor. Let's see. Let's start with the upper left. Okay. So you can see it's kind of not seated properly on the bed. That's not really a surprise. But when picking your edge to put on the print bed, I usually go for the edge with the most surface area. In this case, it'll be this edge down here. So let's go ahead and rotate this. Looks like it's going to be negative 90 degrees. And Simplified 3D has this nice center and arrange button that will bring it up in the middle for us. So now that we've got our piece oriented the way we want, the next consideration we need to take is support. Now supports are necessary because some pieces have overhangs. So say you were printing a uh, like complete arch, you might want some supports in the middle just to make sure that it doesn't droop or sag because that'll make your print look bad. In Simplify 3D, um, the supports are managed over here. You can specify an overhang angle. Any angle greater than this will generate a support underneath it. Right now it's at 45 degrees. If you want, there are several objects out there that can test your printer's overhang capabilities. They look kind of funny but they're a good way to test what your printer can handle and the maximum overhang angle it will tolerate. I know mine to be around 60, so I'm going to import that in and hit this Generate Automatic Supports button. Okay, well that's good news. Uh, it looks like this print, or this piece, has no overhang angle greater than 60 degrees. So let's lower it just so I can show you guys. The printer is going to print these rectangles and this is going to help hold up the print as it starts to overhang a bit. Now in Simplify 3D you can also add your own support structures. This can be useful if um, sometimes Simplify 3D doesn't generate the supports where it needs to. You can also remove existing supports. So if you feel like 
you don't need a spot to if you feel like you have a spot that doesn't need support you can remove them but we're just going to clear all these away now keep in mind the more supports that you have the longer your print is going to take so let's let's get these supports back on and I can show you guys what what I mean so here we've got uh, just a small amount of supports but it's a large ratio to the print so let's prepare this to print and see how long it's estimated to take looks like it's going to be around nine hours nine and a half hours so without changing anything let's go back and remove the supports okay so that was quite a change it went from nine and a half hours down to six hours that's going to save us a lot of time which is great if you only have one printer it's also going to save us filament which will directly impact how much this print costs let's go into some more settings that will affect the amount of time and the amount of materials you use for your print so in simplify 3d to edit your processes or to edit your print settings you have to go into your process just double click it this profile well, a profile basically contains all of your settings in a well profile so if you want to load a different profile and change settings quickly you can just swap between them but I'm just going to keep this one the way it is it's con auto configured for PLA and for fast print quality let's take a look at infill now infill is the amount of materials inside the print itself not not the walls but what's in between the walls if we take a look again at the print if we simplify lets you look inside the print so you can see oops a bunch of crisscrossing gosh I have to stop doing that a bunch of crisscrossing lines this is the infill now it's a myth that infill adds strength I mean it might add a little bit of strength but it's mostly there to support like 90 degree overhangs say if you wanted to print a lid on this right away it acts as like an internal support like what we were working with earlier so the higher your infill percentages let's go up to like 70 the more the smaller openings you're gonna see you can see it's a lot denser this is going to significantly affect the amount of time it takes to print as well as the weight of the final object the heavier it is also means that the more it's going to cost because that's more plastic that's going into each part so you can see this is 10 hours long if we go back to I think it was 20 same same deal it's six hours so just a changing your infill percentage can have a huge effect on how long your print takes as well as how expensive it is now like I said before infill isn't really that important unless you're working with a lot of 90 degree overhangs so I like to keep mine down to 5% it makes it a lot faster to print as well as lighter which is going to come into effect when well when you put it on your body when you start wearing it so 5% you still get some nice infill just to help with some of those steeper overhangs but you don't break the bank doing it and you can see it's also a lot quicker we're at four hours 44 minutes now instead of I think it was around six hours moving on the next process I want to look at is layer height now layer height if we go back to the print preview each one of these little notches is an individual layer we can see the printer prints the object one layer at a time now these layers can be different thicknesses 
Now the thicker your layer is, the quicker it's going to print, but the less detail that's going to be. So if you want extreme detail, you can go like down to 0.1, right? 0.1 millimeters, which is a very small layer height, but you're going to get a lot smoother curves than what we're looking at now. So let's go back and change it. Let's see, right now it's at 0.3. Let's try it at 0.1. We're looking at four hours, 45 minutes. This jacks it up to 12 and a half hours. But as you can see, the curves here are a lot more detailed and a lot smoother. This would be great if you weren't planning on sanding it or smoothing it like we're going to do later. So what I recommend is going to like a having it back at 0.3 is what I usually do. It gives it enough detail so that you have the, you know, kind of rough shape of the armor, but we're going to be smoothing it and sanding it later on, so it doesn't really matter that much in the future so long as it's not absurd like one millimeter layer height which is possible but it looks terrible now we talked about infill percentage and how it doesn't really contribute a lot to print strength what we're going to talk about next has probably the greatest impact on print strength and that is outline and perimeter shells now these shells are the outside layer of your print. If your infill is on the inside, your perimeter shells are on the outside. Let's look at the print preview again. So, if I can control it properly. So we can see, kind of, that there is this one outer layer and then one more in there and then it starts the infill these two layer or these two well, lines are the perimeter shells if you have more of these your print is going to be a lot stronger if you have less of these your print is going to be flimsier or more susceptible to snapping so you want to find a happy medium of course adding more layers also contributes to a longer print and more materials used so you kinda wanna find a happy balance and mine is two so with we know with two layers the print is around four hours 44 minutes let's increase the layers or the perimeter layers sorry perimeter shells let's double it to four and see how long it takes so now we're up to almost seven hours but if we look, this print is going to be a lot stronger because it's got these one, two, three, four exterior shells before it starts going into infill. So maybe if you're working on something like a helmet, it might be a good idea to add more perimeter shells because we won't be adding any strengthening, strengthening material to the helmet but as far as armor goes, I like to stick to two. One last thing before we go, guys. In this print preview screen, we can see this little piece down here that's connected to the print. It wasn't part of the original object. This piece was generated. This is called a raft. Now, a raft is very thick plastic. It's a lot thicker than your objects going to be and it it's generated wherever the object comes into contact with this grid this grid is the print bed now what the raft is going to do is it's going to help with adhesion to the print bed quite a lot uh, I know the problem a lot of beginners have when they're printing is <clears throat> their prints don't stick to the print bed and they'll move off and it'll be a complete failure 
I use this I use rafts to help ensure that the print sticks to the bed. I also find it helps minimize the effectiveness of not minimize the effectiveness, but minimize the impact an unlevel bed might have. Without a raft, your bed needs to be pretty much perfectly level. But if you have a raft for the print to print on top of, that's a lot more forgiving. So you guys have seen all the settings I like to use for printing armor. Basically my approach is to minimize the amount of time each piece takes as well as the amount of materials because we're going to be adding some stuff later on that both helps strengthen the print as well as smooth out the layer lines. So I don't put a lot of materials into the raw prints themselves. What I'm going to do from here is continue slicing all the other parts of the chest armor and saving them to a USB drive which I'll then put into my 3D printer and start printing out pieces. In my next video I'm going to be going over combining those parts so that they're one piece again and what the best way to do that is. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time.